everyone it's jay from lords of war today uh today is all about paint uh common questions misconceptions uh stuff that we come across here at the shop all the time uh here in front of us is a selection of the kind of some of the various paints and brands that we carry this is actually oh, i forgot one <laughs> bring this guy into the fold too here we go <laughs> um and uh yeah because there's 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 so much more paint now than ever um you know going back in time uh 20 years or 15 years or however many um you know working at a games workshop um and growing up kind of in a games workshop so to speak with through my like early hobby years is you know you had basically one choice you had you had citadel paint and whatever derivative or variation of it at the time so uh for me you know it's that mid to late 90s so it's the kind of 60 color range uh with your favorites you know goblin green blood red scorpion green things like that and um that's all we had i think i think i remember reading um because there was a range preceding that, that that people do love um but um there was a lot of like uh like games workshop was trying to create better paint um uh, at that time and that that 60 color range was a big improvement over what they had previously if i recall i think it was even less before so anyway um that's all to say that basically you know I, I like to think like sometimes you look at paint jobs and the way people paint today versus before and some of it is like better skill and more painters and and things like that but i think some of it is just being hamstrung by the material that they had at the time so i think miniatures look the way they do in in the early years because that's just what was available so anyway nowadays we have dozens of options um and and our store is kind of uh known here locally for for um, carrying lots of brands and we're going to continue to add more brands as the years tick by we're hoping to get a couple new exciting products in the next six months um uh, or sooner uh, one of them uh which i don't have here is the army painter fanatic paint which is supposed to be pretty special and um and we'll be getting a another paint by scale color called drop paint which is supposed to be a really uh innovative uh air, 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 airbrush painting line anyway um today i wanted to uh kind of go over um kind of what we have what i like about each brand and paint um you can take for that as you will um of course and i paint a lot of minis thousands of minis over over our hobby careers and many armies and we've tried lots of products and paints and uh, we've kind of settled down on, on these. And I think I, this was also spawned from a question I got. Uh, and it's not the first time I've had this asked by customers is people, sometimes people are like afraid to mix and match a little. They kind of want to marry themselves to a, a range, so to speak, or that's what they're comfortable with. They're like, well, you know, I've been mostly using Citadel or only Vallejo or uh, right now uh, Pro Acryl is very in vogue because it's like new and exciting and has cool colors. Um, and there's a bit of like, you know, they'll ask me, well, I need a color to do this. And I'll be like, oh, well, I have one from a different range. You can, and they're like, oh, I don't know. And uh, the, the short answer is, yeah, you, as long as it's acrylic based, you, you can probably mix and match pretty safely. Um, almost all the brands worth mentioning are in front of you here uh, are going to, um, you know, they're all good paints. Like this is all, you know, fine pigments, cover well uh good opacity like mix well together like non-toxic like all these things like the, the, it, that's the standard now so if uh if, if a distributor or a hobby store is selling paint it's probably um of this type or this they're all in the same i don't know what you call it a uh, tier or whatever i mean there's like going to be little tiers between them can i say unequivocally that one of this one of these in here is like the s plus tier of paint i don't know i would say it's kind of you get like a you know maybe a a minus you know a minus minus like you know i don't know if anything here's truly a b but uh, anyway i'll give my best um so i've i've been kind of like you know grouped by brand and there's like some small differences um first thing i will go into is let's let's talk about citadel because that's the mostly most used um probably the most used brand because like most hobby stores that sell warhammer are also going to sell uh citadel products so uh, this paint line got, uh, it's last major, well, if we don't count contrast paint, but the last major update or redo quite a while ago, well, maybe in paint terms, it's not a while ago, but over 10 years ago, they expanded the color range significantly. 
Uh, and that's when we got the great rename where they renamed all the colors into more um, trademarkable names, uh, which you remember. So you probably, you know, you probably remember. So if someone comes in and is like, I'm looking for blood red. And you're like, well, it's Mephiston red now. And they're like, oh, that's weird. And you're like, so there's a generational gap there a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a solid product. I think it's a good, uh, you know, ignoring the jar style. I, 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 let's, let's assume, let's ignore that for all the paints. I mean, most most brands are nozzle jars with screw tops. Um, the pop top, I think, is more of an inconvenience slightly for usability, but has no bearing on how good the paint is. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's, it's an obstacle you can overcome. If you like the paint, then it won't matter. Um, yeah, overall, I would say it's, it's kind of like the old faithful, dependable paint line. Uh, the main, I would say its main pro or positive is that basically, you know, if you want to paint like the box art, or copy the the Citadel, you know, color schemes and their nice bright poppy art. Um, there you go. You got it all in this range. They 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 pulled directly from the range, so um, that's is probably its greatest strength. Is it the best paint anymore? Um, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily the 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 best best paint. It used to be. Um, I think some of these other companies and brands have kind of like taken over from a pure like usability like quality of the paint maybe like pigment and, and other factors how it performs i'm not going to do a super test of all of them because i think you can find that anywhere like there's lots of videos covering that but i just kind of want to give you my thoughts um but is it bad paint it is absolutely not bad paint it's just it's just kind of the solid that's why a lot of people start with it and you'll have a fine experience you know you're gonna it, it's it's got the easiest system to follow so which is great because a lot of new people need need those like very um you know granular steps so that's great. No other paint line offers it, you know, where you have even the keywords with the base and the layer and dry and stuff. Other quick notes. Um, I still actually use a lot of Citadel shades. I know they've changed several times over the years. Um, yeah, I think they work really well. I still use them to set my models up. I base coat my models and I still put shade all over them to, uh, or the appropriate color of shade to kind of just like dull things down, blend some things together. Uh, add a little bit of shadows and it helps get my models ready for their layers and base coats and highlights and things like that um so love shades and uh, obviously the thing though that i will say they are still the king of is is the contrast paint and or contrast paint you know uh genre now that exists so they were the first to market and i'm gonna say uh hot take there theirs is still the best absolutely no questions asked um they have the best library of colors and yeah some of them are a little bit hit or miss but on the overall they, they're fantastic this stuff has basically revolutionized miniature painting and uh, whether you love it or hate it don't know how to use it uh, all those things uh, that's a question I get asked a lot actually like oh, it's just not for me and I think I think it's because it goes against the grain of what we're used to which which is the kind of the layering process but that's another video <laughs> um, yeah I, I use these all the time sometimes to just like how in the videos where you just slam it on models and other times it's uh, uh, for, for very more technical things, glazes and tints and more dainty type of subtle painting effects. But uh, yeah, can't, can't go wrong with that. So I'll get those out of the way. Uh, next up, I'm going to go to the Vallejo realm. This is the next uh, kind of, I don't want to say oldest, but they're, well, they're probably the oldest of the entire lot, actually. Vallejo it has a long history. Um... Yeah, they've been making paint since like the 50s or 40s or 60s, something like that. You can look up their history. Um, I, don't, I don't want to butcher the details, but basically, yeah, long time in the paint business, way longer than Citadel and all these other brands. And they um, they actually, for a long time, they were, you know, they, they make paint for lots of applications, industrial applications. Uh, one of the most famous things they've done, which you probably don't have no awareness of, but you would know it, is uh, various Disney films were colored in Vallejo um, paints. Not this, not this like game color specifically, but like uh, paint that Vallejo the, as a company made uh, or whatever, you know, whatever they would use to color. Um, and uh, yeah, so they have a long pedigree and they make, they make some of the best paint in the world. Um, they got into the miniatures kind of in the nineties, if I recall, like with their first ring, I think it was model color or game color. One of these two got made during that might have been game color even i don't recall which one came first but um yeah excellent paint uh lasts like doesn't go bad doesn't dry out um uh, barely separates 
very dependable. This is this might be the most solid paint line that you can possibly invest in, and it's the best price. Um, here in Canada, we sell these jars for roughly five dollars. Sometimes they're five dollars fifty, something like that. Um, and uh, some, so if you're talking about differences, model color and game color are pretty much the same. The palette differs. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't have chosen two brown tones, but model color has a more realistic palette of like military colors. Um, and uh, has some bright poppy colors, but you'll find more in between tones and drab tones and things like that. And then game color is meant to be like what you see on, on you know, tabletop miniatures with bright poppy colors and saturated colors, things like that. They redid the game color range uh, last year and very good. I use these quite a bit now for various tasks. Uh, yeah, covers nicely, looks pretty, uh, has a more a little bit more matte finish. That's another thing a lot of game companies have shifted or paint companies have shifted to like a more matte, less shiny finish. That's become kind of uh, in vogue, I guess. Um, Citadel still is more of a satin. Satin is kind of like a little bit of shine. Uh, and then to get another side topic, getting into like different shines and sheens. Uh, matte or flat is not no shine, which is kind of weird. Because <laughs> there's also things called ultra matte <laughs> and things like that. So, uh, so matte is, so basically it would go like ultra matte is like, as little shine as possible and you have matte which is still has a little bit of shine and you have satin and then you'd get into your semi glosses and glosses and super glosses and things like that so anyway um yeah finish is great applies beautifully you can't go wrong so uh and then they also make some other interesting products this is also kind of newish to the scene it's not that new it's maybe at least 10 years old these metallic colors, uh, I wish the palette of these was bigger. It was made primarily for painting like military aircraft and things like that. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, but it is, I'll warn you, it's extremely thin paint. So you have to kind of, uh, I like Chris's uh, tip here. You pour some in a well palette and you let it sit for five, 10 minutes. And then, and then that thickens it just enough to give it a little bit of coverage, but fantastic for your edge highlights. Uh, and oh, airbrush is very nicely though. You just pour it in your airbrush. Uh, and and it'll uh, give you this like super bright chromey. Oh, this one's well, this particular one's chrome, but they have other colors. Um, so yeah, I would say definitely in my top three, tied for number one, maybe maybe one or two, one A, one B, maybe uh, Vallejo. Can't go wrong. So and ubiquitous, which is great. So if you want to get into that paint line, that's great. You won't uh, have a hard time finding it. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about. We'll talk about the new kit on the block. We got uh, Pro Acryl, Pro Acryl by Monument Hobbies. So, Pro Acryl is the the the, the hot popular kit at school right now. Uh, <laughs> maybe a weird analogy, but that's how I think about it. Basically, they're an American paint company. Um, all these other companies in front of us are basically either Spain or United Kingdom. In the case of Citadel, I think they make the Citadel in-house. The Vallejo is probably made all over the place. Uh, I believe one of their main plants is actually in New Jersey, so you can call them American, but their roots are European, I guess you could say. Uh, and then AK and Scale and Chimera and Ammo Mig and Harvey Painter are all European brands. Uh, anyway, so Pro Curl made in the States. Uh, why that's a big deal? Well, just kind of traditionally speaking from like the hobby product perspective not a lot of stuff is like proudly made in america you know it's kind of like i can only think of like maybe badger and you know i'm sure some comments will roast me and be like ah oh, this paint line is made there and it's amazing i, I don't know this is just what i have here <laughs> and what i know well um uh, is the paint good yeah it's good it's good for it's good paint they, they made a a, a very um user-friendly paint their whole uh main marketing um, scheme is it's very opaque so it covers beautifully they want to make a paint that covers really well and that I think that's a valid concern a lot of new painters or painters in general just want to paint they want the, they want to be able to just apply a layer maybe not maybe max one and a half layers and and move on and move on to the next color on their models they don't want to spend time repainting and adding or fighting a color and or putting it or applying a color and then just seeing how like they can still see the black or whatever underneath it. Um, so this paint was designed to like, yeah, coat cover really well. Uh, they've gone with these like nozzle jars. It's a little bit of an interesting, it's a bit of a big jar. They've done some, some things. They, so they, there are agitators in these. 
There you go. Uh, you also get 22 mils, so they're the kind of the, one of the bigger jars uh, of the lot. And they um, uh, and they have a matte finish. So um, so they, again, they, they're meant to have that like soft finish. Um, and then anyway, and then they also have really nice metallic colors. So I've been really fond of this light bronze. I find when they're new though, you do have to really shake them up. Um, great product. The palette is a little bit small right now, but it is growing. Um, not small. It's I think it's sixty five colors. Um, some of these other lines like Vallejo, like the especially Vallejo model color or the AK, they get into the hundreds. Um, they have lots and lots of colors to choose from, so I think that they'll get there as they as they're going forward. And we're back. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, sorry about the interruption there going on about the pro curls. Um, or I lose my train of thought, but yeah, basically, um, pretty good product. I would definitely give it a try. I think uh, I think they've got some solid colors in their lineup. They have some really cool jade colors, which uh, you can tell they kind of looked at other color ranges and were trying to find like where they could, um, you know, fill in a gap or whatever that that maybe wasn't um, you know wasn't readily available. There's just some colors that don't get made as much. Maybe they don't sell as well or whatever. But uh, to me, I, I love I love getting um, new colors. Uh, or color, seeing colors that aren't as as easily available. So, um, like, this is just yeah. For some reason, colors like these like ghost grays and jade greens um, and certain magentas and they have this like dark magenta is not very common to find in other paint lines. So, uh, give them a go. Don't be afraid. Next up, uh, I'm gonna go into the kind of the wild card paints. These are like paints that have like specific uses in kind of limited ranges. Uh, obviously we got Army Painter Speed Paint. Uh, Vallejo also has a, a contrasty paint called Express Color. Can't go, can't say anything really negative about it. It's more more type of contrast paint. Uh, I will mention though that uh, Army Painter is coming back with, with into the kind of the regular paint arena with their new paint, Fanatic Paint, which is I think like a great idea by them. And, and, it, and they're like, you know what? We've been making paint for a while. We can make a good paint. And I think for a long time, uh, the Army Painter branding and marketing has been very, um, you know, they're, they're, they've they're always been like, we're the discount hobby supply. So we make decent products, they're priced well, we're not the best, but they get the job done, you know, kind of thing. And, um, you know, there's a reason why Chris and I never carried the War Paints range, which is the, the kind of their stock paint range. Because at the time, you know, it was between basically you had options like Vallejo and Citadel and War Paint, and we're like, but you know, War Paint is just kind of like a little bit cheaper, uh, you know, a little bit less quality Citadel paint. So it was like, why, why have both? It, was, it seemed redundant. Um, we have lots of their other hobby supplies, but uh, like their tools and basing materials and tufts are all solid. But I thought on the paint range, it was kind of. I don't know. It it just didn't really make sense compared to the, the other options available uh, until they made this, and then with the fanatic paint, they have a really cool uh, trailer you want to call it where they go into the, the thought process of fanatic paint and it looks like they they they've they're really spent a lot of resources and time and thought into it, and even just making a, a little video about it I think probably cost some some good chunk of money, and I don't think they would have done that if they weren't like uh proud of what they're making so um anyway look out for that i think it's gonna be really good i think you're gonna see it make the rounds on the internet um so that's about Ari painter uh next thing i have is uh this is kind of cool this is something that you're probably not even aware exists um is uh, so we got uh ammo mig or mig jimenez or whatever another spanish company that makes uh cool hobby products and this is their dry brush paint. So not a lot of options in this sphere. You know, you have uh, basically Citadel made their own dry paint, which I will say flat out, uh, I don't love it because it's it's kind of just like really thick paint. Like it's like they took their, it. <laughs> this is gonna sound stupid, but it, this I have no idea. And maybe someone who works for Citadel or something would, would eventually have an answer for me, but it looks like they took regular paint and let it dry for <laughs> a few hours and then resealed it because it's, it's. I don't know. I find it. I know some people use it a lot and probably like make it work. 
I could never uh, really make it work because it was just too, it was literally too dry and chunky and thick and weird. Uh, I remember opening some jars of like, of their metallic dry paint, like it was Necron compound and it was literally rubber and I was like, how do you use this? Uh, anyway, um, this paint though is actually still liquid. It Its pigment is very nice, uh, but it's just like a really thick, maybe they added gel to it, gel medium or something to it to keep the thickness but not be dry if that makes sense and anyway you pair this with some artist opus dry brushes or that or those style of dry brushes and um really nice and uh, actually the paint is usable you can actually take it out it's kind of thick and creamy you can thin it and paint with it too if you like some of the colors uh although the palette is mostly like pastels and these these types of colors because it's designed for dry brushing um that the metallics they make are very good too the metals and the um gold and stuff so I've seen people dry brush their 40k titans and stuff in it. Uh, definitely use give this a go. It's it's actually really awesome. Um, yeah, just a little bit specialty, but really good. The last one I'll talk about from this grouping is the Chimera Chimera paint. Uh, this you may know is famous for being what we call single pigment. So they, you know, the other paints we've been showing here on the lineup, they're you know mixes of different pigments to make certain colors. Um, here they've got like the raw, you know, this is thalo green, they have thalo blue, red, thalo blue, blue, violet, red, things like that. They have all the primary colors. Anyway, this, this paint is designed to be like mixed together. So when you buy a box of this, like the, the starter set or whatever, or whatever you call it, the base set, you know, you, you literally get like a sheet, uh, with, with how to mix different colors to get different things because there's only like 13 of these and the idea is you can derive every color you need from from like the the bare minimum so it's like a true artist paint paint theory paint line the paint itself is very good very high quality um very nice matte super matte finish um mixes beautifully together they do have a medium you can use uh, but generally speaking this is like I don't really some of these some of these are famous because they can be used out of the jar pretty easily like there's a red that's always sold out uh orange violet things like that because they're just like the color by itself is like people love just the, the, the whatever the color it is um out of the jar um you know like i said the things like the red uh you, you might just use as a base coat for light angels or something because it's just that it's the great color um but this is mostly made for like people that like to really paint just one thing at a time because like you probably don't i wouldn't recommend jo going this route getting all the camera colors because you want to army paint I and mean, you're going to be i think i mean some people fine if you love mixing every step ev all the time that's great then you'll love it uh i think the majority of people though are going to be like driving going crazy they're going to like do it once and then be like this is too much work so love the paint uh but i think it's it's got a it's 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 life is more in the uh, single figure painting type of thing which is again that's that's a great part of the hobby like i i sometimes i wish all i did was paint single figures and just uh fall in love with whatever figure i'm painting and go nut and you know spend hours and hours and things like that but i do also like playing games so it's kind of yeah you know, i need to have stuff that i can uh do quickly and repeatedly so all right down to the next two here uh i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of save the ak for last um so we'll talk about scale color scale is uh we've had it in the store for a little while actually in, in some years um very good paint i think this is the paint line that you probably like doesn't get enough uh love i guess maybe maybe because like they don't show it off enough online or get enough like painters of the like war gaming painters to use their products or whatever um very good paint yeah this this the thing about this paint is it is very it is a little thicker um, so when you use it out of the jar, it feels weird. It's got like this, you can see at the top of this jar here, maybe I don't know if the camera can focus. That's like all medium because this paint is like very creamy. So you have to really kind of stir it and shake it up. Um, and when you squirt some out, it looks like this like really thick paint. But then when you add water or, or a medium to it, it thins really nicely and it holds its shape really well when you pull it across your palette. Um, another matte finish paint. <laughs> That's like kind of the thing now. And, uh, yeah, really nice. It blends really nicely. Um, yeah, I, I I find I like it a lot. Another kind of limited palette. And they've got about sixty-ish colors. One of their Rockstar products is their metal paint. You probably heard of this, the, the metal and alchemy black metal. 
they kind of made they're one of the first people in the last decade to make like a just like one of the best metallic paints that you can buy um yeah because you apply it on and you just like back in the day when you <laughs> i'm thinking of like years ago or whatever when you applied a metal paint it was like it, it covered terribly the pigments were like large you could see the big metal flex things like that uh this stuff it goes on super smooth and covers really well and looks awesome blends really nicely so definitely give the metals a try i always introduce people to this paint company and range through their metallics and they have a great library of metallic paints because they have like coppers and rose golds and different brasses and dark metals and dark brown metals and you know it's they got it all they have like many types of different like a cold gold and a hot gold and um definitely give that a go uh, they have a, a, a sister range that goes with their, so Scale Color is their main range, and then Fantasy and Games is their kind of, uh, it's meant to have more, more gaming colors in it. Um, still good paint. And then the last thing they make that I think isn't popular enough, um, I personally love it a lot, is their, uh, heavy body, like, tube paint. So this is an acrylic paint, this is a tube. And it's kind of like the regular paint, but the pigment's even more saturated, it's, it's not quite Chimera, like, where they're single pigments, but they're, um, yeah, you can see they have a couple different in them, but um, it's kind of like, if you like canvas painting but want to paint that's quality enough to use on miniatures, this is kind of it. Um, I always break these out similarly when I'm painting certain projects. I've used them on my Wargaming minis, but sometimes I like using them for... Uh, one-offs like I painted my Bellacor entirely in this type of stuff and it's such a joy to use it's got like extra I don't know what it is acrylic or binding in it that it keeps it or a retarder it doesn't dry that quickly so you have more time to like stretch it and blend it um so it's a real joy especially if you're painting like capes and large webbed wings and things like that it's it's awesome I love it yeah so but Definitely underrated. Not not enough um, attention. I'll try and do a, a. I'll paint something with this on video um, sometime soon, so people can get an idea of it. It's it's really special. Um, so yeah, can't go wrong there. Super good. And, and then the last paint I'm gonna talk about because it kind of feels like one of the newest ones on the on the block, other than Monument Hobbies, is uh, AK Interactive. And this is my favorite paint, probably right now or in general. Um, it's kind of like a Vallejo and scale paint and how great the pigment is but then it has a bit of that like stuff I was talking about this two paint where it has a little this like little bit of extra blending time that other paints don't have um it it yeah when it lies it dries perfectly every time it airbrushes super nicely it's super versatile the color palette is is a great blend of both uh wargaming and non wargaming colors um, their metallics are almost as good as the scale one, or the, yeah, the scale color ones. Um, not as many shades, though, but, you know, they, they may only have, like, eight shades, whereas this, this one, they have, like, 24 shades of metallics in the scale. Um, this Matt Radden from New Pierce is basically Mephiston Um Yeah, super good. And uh, I definitely say recommend give it a try. You've probably seen lots of painters use this stuff now um there's a reason for it uh it's it's well priced too i think it's about we sell them for about 650 a jar um and they've also recently come out with these deep shades which is kind of like best way i can describe it, it's like it's like a citadel wash but a bit thicker so it kind of performs like kind of like the the era before the current era you know when we had like colors like bedab black and devil in mud and stuff it kind of feels like those so i don't know if it has more organic compounds in it uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to like this a lot too. This is interesting stuff to use. Um, I think that being a little thicker, it gives you a little more time to slide it around before it starts drying. Um, and then when it dries, it's a bit on the darker end. So if you like your shade paints to, to dry a little on the darker end, because some people find that the newer or the newer formulas of Citadel, for example, are like not dark enough. So if you like have to do extra layers of it, um, so definitely give this deep shades a try anyway uh that's that's the paint lineup that's all the paint that we uh it's, well not all of it there's more paint that we sell and carry that i didn't really cover things like oil paints and enamels and things like that um and i, I guess the biggest takeaway is is you know mix and match if you if you see my own you know this is all straight from my own hobby box but if you look over here you know i've got everything in here there's 
all the brands, it's all mixed in there. Use it all interchangeably. Um, don't be afraid. And, uh, you know, more options than ever, you know. Try and, you know, watch the videos. There's lots of great content makers that paint awesome things. And, um, you know, if you can't find the exact color, you can probably find a pretty good equivalent. And, uh, yeah, so comment below, you know, what's your favorite paint? What do you like about it? Um, do you have questions for Chris and I about uh, why we would use a certain paint or why we like something? Um, and then, yeah, so this is going to be part of a little bit of ongoing series. going to try and cover different hobby supplies. Uh, you know, probably the next one we'll do is something to do, probably brushes. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. It's a bit of a long one. And, uh, yeah, take care.